Hey y'all, just uh, coming on here today. <clears throat> just kind of talk about some things that uh, we have talked about before, but I feel that is very, 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 and I couldn't say very enough, important for people to know, research, and look into, and search your heart, search back up, back up from religion. Please back up from religion. Religion will send you to hell. If there's ever a place waiting for people, it is religious people that hell is waiting for. An astounding statement, I agree. However, you are playing with, it would have been better to have never known the truth. Better to have never known about God than to play a hypocrite. And understand me, I know that most of you, I was not intentionally a hypocrite when I was in religion. I didn't feel that I was being a hypocrite. What is a hypocrite? A hypocrite is saying to do things that they don't do, but the problem is it has to be truth. You're not a real hypocrite if you're not even in truth. He said that they they blocked the door. They know, but they block the door that others who would come in would not because they make themselves, they make them a twofold child of hell more than they themselves. So right off the bat, those that are standing in the way, and this is, I will, I will proclaim that standing in the way, that, that, that thought, that being, that if it could be a being, it's not a being, but that spirit of antichrist which I call religion is standing in the way and it makes them that would come in to the truth let's let's face it it, it ain't coming into the church you're coming into truth Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life he didn't say I'm the church and 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 this this whole church is is passed around too lightly they, they want to say that the church is God's family, God's approved. Now, I know what the scripture says. I, I'm, not, I'm not lax on the scripture, trust me. There's nobody going to come on here and say, oh, but what about this scripture? You must not have read that. I have read it, trust me. Trust me, I've read that New Testament I don't know how many times. I've been in the Old Testament. I have taught Search for Truth Bible studies over a hundred, in fact, while the, the COVID thing was going on. So you don't need to school me on, hey, well, you must not have read this. You must not believe that. First of all, I believe what the Lord has put there to believe. And not all of it is to believe in doing or it does not translate into me doing it also. Now we used to say all the time that oh well you know it says here that Judas went and hung himself and then I can go pull out another scripture saying go thou and do likewise that that's that's twisting the scripture that's that's just totally did they both derive from the Bible? Yes are they both as we used to say it I don't say it anymore are they both the word of God? Yes See, the word of God was what Jesus said or something very similar. And when you, you take all of the words of Jesus, place them in context, and, and you put those in a cloud, you separate those, put those up in a cloud, in, in a picture. You just draw yourself a little, little cloud around all those sayings of Jesus not only just the sayings, but the, the era, the, the who he was talking to, what he was speaking of, the characterization. When you put all those things in a cloud, and then you go read the other books, 
And let's just focus on the New Testament. Not all the prophecies that was talking about Jesus coming, the Messiah, those pointed to him. And it came true. So we can validate that, that part of it. But there are several things that we can't validate. looks like one of my cameras went off, but anyhow, that's why I do backups. Anyhow, this is what we're talking about today. We're talking about a false fake religion that is 99% of what people claim to be Christian. It is in no wise Christian because I say a few words of what someone said that you should believe and many of you, if you've listened to many of these messages, you would know, you would know but, but I'm sure many don't. But that's all right. But the point is, is back in the day when these, these things were being written, especially of Paul's stuff, and, and if you realize that Paul did not characters, that, that revelation in uh, places like Daniel and Ezekiel talk about, so when you look at that, that that is that is talking about the end times, but those are for the Jews. Those items are specifically the Jews. We are not a Jew. And and you know, words could be said that we come into the faith, we we, we are now adopted into the faith, but this is this is faith. This is not the ordinances, this is not the Mosaic Law. This is not what we are incorporated back into. The church, I say the church, religion. When I say the church and religion, they are intertwined because that's what these religions call themselves. They call themselves the church. They call themselves the body of believers. But they're not believers in Christ or they would not be doing what they're doing. They would not be teaching what they're teaching. They teach of themselves. They are the ones that put the heavy burdens on men. That is what Jesus said to the scribes and the Pharisees of his day. That was the religion of his day. The scribes and the Pharisees. They were the keepers of the law. They were who you went to if you needed to break down understanding of the written words of Moses and, and the law and, and, and Leviticus and the, and the ordinances and things. These, they piled extra onto and into what God ever meant for them. So when you look at those things, you are finding that these things are bogus for a Christian. Because you see, a Christian is a follower of Christ. Although in name, they want to tell you that they are Christians. They want to tell you they are the church of Christ. But they are not the church of Christ. They do not do. He said, my sheep know my voice. And another they will not follow. If you are following anything outside the Spirit of God, that Holy Ghost, that Comforter, that renewal, that, that promise that Jesus sent back called the Holy Ghost, if you are following religion, you have missed Jesus as the Jews did. You must recalibrate your faith. You must reset. You must refocus your faith on God through the face and the mercies and the grace of Jesus Christ. No man come to the Father but by me, the words of Jesus. No man's going to talk, reach, or please God but through me. That's Jesus. You cannot change that. You cannot turn around and, 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 and muddy that to something different. Man has not been passed the torch. And they love, they love to take the, the word Jesus said, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock, upon this rock, I will build my church. I will gather my believers. Jesus said, He that believeth in me shall have everlasting life. Rivers of living waters. 
said, I speak not of this world, but this is not my world. This is not heaven, but my world is heavenly. My world is spiritually. It is not of this world. So when you look at that and they talk about build my church, though they build it on Peter. No, they did not build it on man. Jesus was not talking about a physical man called Peter. He was talking about the revelation, the thought that Jesus gave him through the spirit of who he is. God manifest in the flesh. God's own word was made flesh and dwelt among us. It is God in the beginning. It is the word was in the beginning. The same was in the beginning with God. The same in, the word was God. You can't change that. Jesus did not pass the baton to Peter. He did not pass the baton to the apostles. What is the baton? He did not pass the authority to make up or give an interpretation of what he said. He gave them he brought them, he called them to be a witness. A witness of their identification of all he did and said. Not the interpretations thereof. He doesn't need man to interpret his word. Because if you read your Bible, if you read about Jesus, if you read what Jesus came to do, you will realize, you will find, and God will enlighten you in a humble spirit of wanting to learn. God will enlighten you to the fact that it is the Spirit that will bring you into all truth, understanding, and enlightenment of what God has said through the mouth and the face of Jesus Christ. If you move off of that, then you have once again lost the vision of God, the actual salvation from Jesus Christ, our sacrifice. It is his blood that has taken away and redeemed us from sin. It is his blood, by his blood, by the washing and renewing of his word, not Paul's word, not Peter's word, not Andrew, Bartholomew, not any other apostle, not any other writer. But through the name, through the words of Jesus Christ, shall we be judged. You have to make that distinction in your walk with God, in your faith. Because otherwise, you are finding yourself following man man the law of Moses it's all mixed together and he said in the last days he will have new wine and that first miracle that he made was very indicative of exactly what he was trying to put forth he said we don't put old we don't put new wine in old bottles because it will bust the old bottle but the new wine was saved to the last in the supper of the marriage. And that is exactly what the, what the, um, not the host, but the, the, the guest of the marriage said. He said, most will give the best wine beginning. He said, but you save the best, the most robust, the most effective wine to the last. And he somehow liked that because it was a change. And you know what Jesus brought? Us a change from the old law. The old to the new. The letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. The letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. How much simpler can that be told? If you want to live after the letter, if 
you want to live after the words that are penned in the scripture in what we call the Bible of 66 books if you want to live that you are going to follow confusion you are going to follow um, unbelief because many things in there are unbelievable they're unbelievable because they are not what God wants us to know or not necessarily know but to follow let me just make a couple quick points here Acts 15 you will find that the disciples that out some of them you read the whole chapter pray and ask God to open your heart your mind and, and, and when you read that, read it in context, and you will see that they, the Gentiles, that some of them went out, well, some of who? Some of the disciples went out from among them, and soon as they heard that the Holy Ghost was given also to the Gentiles, they ran right out, and this is your religion today, Soon somebody knows it. Oh, well, look, look here. Oh, that's what happened to me. I found the Lord in an alley. God spoke to me in an alley. I spoke to him. And, and, and what we're taught is that we must go to church. We must find a building. We must find people that know about God. When God all along didn't need their help in talking to me, he called me. Except the Spirit of God draw a man he cannot come. A lot of people aren't called. They aren't being called. They're being invited to a church house building and a group of people that are trying to be nice to them to win them over to what they think is follower of Christ. But they themselves are deceived and they're being deceived and deceiving others. So we must we have to figure this thing out that Jesus, the Spirit of God, is what leads us. Not some pastor, not some priest, not some doctrine of, of men's matters. You have to know God through the power and resurrection of His Spirit, that returned comforter, that returned happiness river of living water that freedom in whom the son of man is set free is free indeed you pick up these burdens of men they're extracurricular things oh well you can't you can't do this you gotta do this and do that and you can't nature even paul which many things i don't agree with him even paul which is who you the religious world today follows. They don't follow Jesus. They're following Paul, which cannot save. He'll not be able to deliver you from anything. Neither by any words that does not jive with Jesus. They are false. They are geared towards an assembly of this earthly church that they call the Church of God which in no wise is the church of God at all. GoPro, start recording. So it looks like one of my cameras went off, but anyhow, that's why I do backups. Anyhow, this is what we're talking about today. We're talking about a false fake religion that is 99% of what people claim to be Christian. It is in no wise Christian because I say a few words of what someone said that you should believe. And, and many of you, if you've listened to many of these messages, you would know, you would know but, but I'm sure many don't. But that's all right. But the, point is, is back in the day when these, these things were being written, especially of Paul's stuff, and, and if you realize that Paul did not quote anything 
that Jesus said or done. He did not quote those things. He didn't bring about their Jesus' miracles. It was more the writer, whether Paul or someone else, the writer focused on Paul, not Jesus. Jesus was only inserted to keep your attention and your focus on Jesus as being the authority by which the other words were spoken. This was piggybacking on the authority of Jesus. This was not promoting Jesus. It was his own doctrine. And I know this, this is big taboo for, for many of you religious Christians. I cringe at calling you a Christian because you're not following Christ. When you come to that four-way stop, or that T in the road, and it says, Paul right, Jesus left, you go to the right with Paul. That's what you're living in a church house theory. This is exactly what you're living in. You are not living according to Jesus. And so anyhow, I'm gonna cut this short. We're gonna, we're gonna continue on in this in this subject matter uh we're gonna we're gonna continue um there's other things i want to get to in this message but i don't want to make it so long that people see 50 minutes and they're like oh, i'm not I'm, i don't have time i'm gonna listen to all that so anyhow we'll be back we'll be doing more perhaps on the way back on this trip that i'm taking and uh we'll put some more out but uh thanks for listening and pray about this search the scriptures <laughs> don't don't just search the scriptures don't just look at the the words but let the spirit of Jesus Christ that holy ghost that he sent that comforter that peace that joy unspeakable full of glory that is what will put the light on the words written in what we call the Bible. And I focus, I'm not a Jew. I don't want to be a Jew. I'm a Christian. I want to stay a Christian. I'm not looking for anything that, that is, is Jewish. I'm looking for Jesus. And I'm hastening unto his coming or my departure. So anyhow, with that, I'll talk at you later. Love you guys in Jesus' name. Hey guys, we're back. <clears throat> Heading back to uh, the home front here. Anyhow, that the other the other topic I wanted to kind of, and I'm not going to keep it just just on that topic, but whatever the Lord brings to my mind and my heart. But one of the other things we wanted to talk about, and I've, I've again, I have I've taught and preached on this in the past. And so when you look at the writings of Paul, done research on whether Paul wrote it, somebody else wrote it, and all that stuff, and, and, and it just doesn't seem to be provable either way in some of the instances, whether Paul wrote it or somebody wrote about Paul. Um, so, and, and I've said before, I have never attributed wrongdoing specifically to Paul because I can't because of the fact that somebody said Paul wrote it. I don't know that he wrote this. I don't know that there wasn't another person writing about Paul. God knows. But nonetheless, there was nothing quoted by the writings attributed to or a part of Paul that literally quoted miracles and things that Jesus did, nothing about his family. And you say, well, Jesus, Paul wasn't there when Jesus was there. You're right. But that doesn't excuse Paul. It says in the book of Acts, and you will find that <laughs> Peter was there 
And we know the relationship by the Gospels of what Peter and Jesus had. We know the relationships of James, the brother of Jesus, was there uh, during Paul's tenure. So when you look at that, how could Paul not have heard things about Jesus, yet he did not quote any of the miracles and the, and the genealogy of Jesus? Or attributed to those things what was wrong with Paul or the writer why why and, and as I alluded to in, in, in part one of this this uh, conversation is the fact that in those times when those writings were happening when people began to put them on paper and, and many of you know that it was it was near 100 years plus, maybe even second, third century, before some of these writings literally that we have access to, I'll just say it that way, literally hit the paper or the parchment or whatever they wrote on, uh, the scrolls or what have you. But these things we have to be aware of. Um, so... What got lost? What didn't get lost? What was uh, maliciously changed? And and if, if you think that the Bible that we have in our hands access to today is is unchanged, then then you are living under a rock. You have not done any due diligence of studies to know that there are interpretation variants. There are things that were interpreted. There are things that were manipulated and literally changed, added and taken away. So these, these things are out there. You cannot just throw your head under a rock and say, oh, I don't know. God figured it out, sorted it all out and stuff. No, no, I don't believe that's the case. But many do because they like that confusion because in confusion, you can pick and choose the things that, oh, well, I believe it says this and thus this way I will teach it. Well, they love that. The devil loves that. That spirit of antichrist loves to manipulate the words of God and the meaning of God more so. So when you look at that and you look at the interpretations, there were things added. There, I've, I've taught on this before. I've, I've ex expressed this, um, that the ending of, of even the gospel, one of the gospels, is added. And it was literally, with that addition, changed what would have been left for our own interpretation in the sense that, hey, they've added things. And so I'm not going to get into that right now because I don't want to just get off on a tangent. But you can go back and look at some of those things and listen to some of the conversations we've had. But the point is, during these writings, and this is why, this is why, this is why, and this is the very, 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 not enough very importance that you must lean on the Spirit of God and the Spirit by which Jesus taught what he taught, said what he said, gave instruction the way that he gave instruction. And with that same Spirit of love, compassion, and tenderness, that by which he gave it. This is where we have the flaws in the interpretations. Now, again, I'm going to go go through some stuff here. We talked about Paul giving, you know, the, the miracles and things that the, Jesus did. Um, why in the world? Oh, some some will some will just butter it over and say, oh, well, you know. It's been said already in the gospel, so he didn't feel the need to repeat it. Let me tell you something. You can't talk about Jesus with, and, and, and tell people that they need to come under Jesus without telling how great he is and the miracles he did and a reference by which of the things that he did and said. So 
You can't get there like that. Because the Spirit, Jesus said when the Spirit is come, He will speak of me. Not yourself, not your own doctrine, but the Spirit of Jesus will speak of Jesus. So these are the things that you must understand. You must look at. You must see. Again, don't put your head under a rock. Don't listen to man. Seek it out. Search it. For in them ye think, Jesus said, search the scriptures. For in them ye think you have eternal life. Don't depend on man's own motives the way that he wants to express truth to you because it will not work for you in the end. It will not come great for you. You will only be able to cite the words of Jesus of why you did or did not do something. You will not be able to cite Paul, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John unless it was the words of Jesus. You cannot cite those other things because it's my word that will judge you in the last day, Jesus said. So, anyhow, let's go back to Paul. What are we talking about? The writers of Paul, again, I, I, I'm not even going to go to the extent again, but I don't know that Paul wrote it. I don't know that that was his intent personally. I don't know for sure. I cannot 100% say this is why or what. But I can tell you what is there that people are going off of is wrong. So anyhow, this is this is where we're at. Where what what jumps out at me the most outside of going and listening to the history, reading history, uh, reading back and forth be, between these uh, very high knowledge. When I say high knowledge, I'm talking about they know Hebrew, they know Greek, they uh, purport that they are Christians. Um, they they are very wise and smart, and it only takes to read their their um, dictation notes and their back and forths to know that they they know their Bible, they know what they're what they're speaking on. Um, so it's not hard to, it's not far off to think that, you know, now these guys aren't even believers, blah, blah, blah. And some of them do not believe that, that the Bible is true. They, that some of them are, are only looking at a history based, um, a, a fact based, can they connect dots? A lot of them are just, just looking at that part of it. Can they connect the dots of what history is? And some of you, I know, you, you say, oh, well, they're just taking their word for it. No, they're not. What they're looking at is types of writings trying to give them certain era, um, specific times when people spoke in that language and with those dialects. Um, so they are matching this with, with other uh, non-Christian history uh, words and things like that. You, you figure if, if somebody's talking about medical, uh, maybe a certain procedure, um, let's, let's just call out, you know, a special procedure that they have today that they didn't possibly have the technology to perform 50 years ago. So, if there are writings that we find that are speaking of, of laser uh, cataract surgery that that is is saying that it happened in you know 20 AD and, and people are trying to believe that and then you got someone that says I mean that's that's a far fetch right but I'm just trying to make a skew here to show you that there are certain eras of languages and, and things that were known at a time that versus things that were not known at other times when they go to match these things up. So it's not just 
done because this person believes it this way and this person wants to believe it that way. Some of it is very legit. And and you, you can't just say, oh, well, you're going to believe them over a preacher. Um, yeah, if the preacher is just going off of what he wants to think or believe and he's trying to base it as fact, then that's a problem when the other guy who may not be a believer literally has facts and it makes more sense in the sense that facts are facts then yeah I'm, I'm sorry I'm not gonna not gonna believe in that so it's just the way it's got to go um, so yes that that would be the way that you would have to sort things out so all that said when you look at all the things Jesus done, what do you know of Jesus? Stop right here. Go back to that cloud we talked about before. All the things, the way Jesus said it, the, the spirit behind it. Um, you know, when we look at the demons that, that Jesus uh, cast out of the, the, the man um, and, 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 and they asked to go in the swine and Jesus let them go in the swine. This guy had possession for great many years that he was tearing his own flesh at the will of these demonic spirits that this man was suffering. And when you look at that and you say, Jesus, when Jesus turned over the money changers tables at the temple, according to what we read, right? When you look at that, you say, well, Jesus turned over the tables well that's as bad as and no one was hurt by the way there was not any recollection of anyone being hurt because even when people were hurt aka or, uh, when you look at the fact that Peter chopped off the, the soldier's ear and Jesus put the soldier's ear back on and was taking him away to kill him so when you look at causation and, and, and reason why Jesus would have, could have, or, or might have done certain things, even when it seemed appropriate to do, Jesus hurt no one. So Jesus took nothing away. And even the demons that requested to go into the swine, Jesus allowed them to go. Now you could say, well, he knew they were going to killed himself anyhow in the sea or whatever well that's fine the fact is he could have denied him and said no you're gone bye Psh. cease to be but Jesus didn't do that so these are things that I recollect when I read the stories that were put forth of and by or for Paul and when you look at those things where Paul's conversion is totally off kelter of anything that I know of Jesus doing in any manner close to that. So here we are, Paul, the story of Paul says, I was on the road to Damascus. Now you say, but Paul was persecuting the church. It was, this was like beyond the pale. Oh, well, you, you can't, you can't, you can't compare that with the demons and that's causing this man to cut his flesh and, and torment him for, was it 38 years or so? You're going to tell me that Paul was doing less than that? Or more than that? Or vice versa? There, there is a comparison here that you must think about. So here we are. We've got the fact that Paul says... That he was on the road to Damascus and Jesus struck him down off of the horse, the camel, whatever he was on, and, and blinded him. Well, I have that's a first, a first for me, because I'm pretty sure that I've never heard of Jesus causing blindness. Now I can tell you. That I have heard plenty of times, and I'm sure that he did it way more times than what was recorded, that he healed people from being blind. He caused the blind to see. He caused the lame to walk. He 
did not bring leprosy on people. He took it away from people. He did not take away limbs. He did not take away their vision. He did not take away those things that Paul claimed that he did. Until Paul said he did. Which I find very hard to believe and I do not believe it. This to me is an insertion of the church. This is an insertion of man's power through fear of God the way they want you to fear God. I do not believe it. I believe it's a lie. My Jesus did not do that. And if you think that same Jesus did what is told about him of Paul, we got a problem. Because you are not believing truth. So not only did Jesus not say, follow me, come follow me, do as I do, love as I love. First commandment, great commandment, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, being, my strength. Love him with everything. Put him first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he said the second is to love your brother as yourself. You love humanity, humankind. And lo and behold, we find that Paul's insertion says that Jesus struck him down. Jesus didn't heal him. Jesus didn't win him over with love or miracle of, of, of compassion. But Jesus won him over by fear and pain. I don't believe it. I believe Jesus. I don't believe Paul. If what Paul says is against what Jesus is and said and did, I don't believe it. I don't believe that he was acting out of the Spirit of God or Christ. I don't believe that the Spirit of God was upon him. Guiding or directing him in any such way because I've never heard that before. Now you say, oh, well, that's just one thing. Maybe it didn't happen. Maybe that was just, that doesn't totally invalidate Paul. Okay, well, why does the writer or Paul himself, being the writer, speak only of himself and just insert Jesus here and there when it's appropriate to keep your mind on story we ain't done with this whole fear thing we ain't done with this whole blindness thing yet because you'll find not too much later as Paul is in his evangelistic uh, journeys also made a man blind himself. So here we're using this blindness, this tactic of fear to bring people under subjection to believe the story they're telling. And they're attributing it to God, Jesus Christ. They're attributing these things to Jesus Christ. Looks like my batteries are getting hot. Um, anyhow, on my GoPro, that's why it's not staying on, it looks like. They're just going down too fast. Anyhow, so that's what we're looking at, folks. We're, we're looking at areas where
GoPro, start recording. I don't think it's going to be on very long. Um, anyhow, these are things that we have to be attentive to. When you see these things, you can't ignore them. This is real stuff. See, well, there's certain things that doesn't add up. There's lots of things that doesn't add up. Which is, again, the full weight of knowing God through the Spirit of Jesus Christ. He said, my Spirit will lead and guide you into all truth righteousness my spirit will speak of me he will bring discernment to the words penned in those 66 books more so the new testament the new testament and will of jesus christ you cannot get off of that the old testament brings me to christ shows me that it was before prophesied as the Messiah. Once I'm there, I don't need to look back. Except for a history lesson. I don't need that. That is not applying to me. Outside of what Jesus is teaching me through the scripture by his spirit. His spirit is that check mark. His spirit is what will allow me to know in my heart, my mind, what is what in the pages of man's writing. And, and you can go off and say all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Well, all true scripture, if it said it that way, I believe it that way. But it does not say all true scripture. So there are things there that does not add up. That is impossible, both time-wise and geographic-wise. There are stories told then that some things are just impossible that could be true. Those are in the Gospels. One talks about they're, they're in this area, they're in that area, when it could not have been. So there are flaws, and I do believe that, that these things allow us, and I, I believe that God, overall, has allowed us to see these things because he wants us to know it is not the word that we live by, it is the spirit of the word that brings us within the order of the word that Christ and God has made for us to do to apply every man shall live by the word of God of course but not all that Bible is the word of God but man needs you to believe that so that they can manipulate you they have they know there's flaws in the credibility of, of areas in in the scripture but this works to their favor this works to their favor so that they can manipulate things. Well, yeah, I know this, but this is what it meant. This is what it really meant. This, because over here, I got three scriptures. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring you over here. But so, but by God, you, 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 you know this is the true word of God, and and every everything you gotta believe it. They'll say the same thing right out of the same mouth. Same tongue will profess profess the same thing. Well, you know, we 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 just don't think that was what he meant here but then you better believe it because that's what he meant here so they're 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 not giving you the freedom in christ to allow you to walk a walk between you and jesus so when you look at those things when you see that paul was struck down Jesus. Who did it? Jesus did it because he said, Who art thou, Lord? He proclaims, I am Jesus, whom you persecuteth. 
I'm the one that you're offending. So very clear that, that Jesus is tainted for the first time outside of the accusations of the scribes and Pharisees. And did you know that Paul's father was a Pharisee and Paul was of the Pharisees? And then those, those people that, that wanted the Gentiles to be circumcised and, and, and obey the law in Acts 15, I hope you've read, that, that Paul's part of them too. So these are things that, that really put a dagger in the heart of their teachings. Because they need you to go by the law. And if you're not going by the law, there's a problem. Because they cannot manipulate the words, the letter that killeth into truth. And if Jesus was the truth, and if his word was going to judge us and is going to judge us, then we have no alternative when something goes outside and against what Jesus taught, what Jesus did. So I'm going to just leave it there for now. I think this is a, this is a lot of stuff and, and people, you will have to will have to reconcile your faith with not just the word but with the spirit teaching you what parts of that word and I'm not talking about the word of God the word of God is unchanging however the way that we must find God did change with Jesus Christ the new and living way. So, anyhow, let's let's leave it here for now, and we will have other subjects and talk about this more at a later time. We're going to talk about the rapture. Is it really a rapture coming? Where 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 does that come from? The word rapture is not there. Neither is the word Trinity. Does it make them any less of the religious world? No, it doesn't. But the catching away. Um, the new Jerusalem is that just for the Jews do we have something far greater by being the people called by his name is the Gentiles going to have something different because the Jews were, were of the vine and we were plucked into the gra vine grafted we'll talk about those things how they mix and how they don't mix so anyhow stay tuned with some of the messages coming up um, we will, I'm going to, I'm going to try to, we're going to look at some, uh, doing some podcast, um, maybe with, with some, uh, multiple people, uh, maybe conversations live, um, and on podcast and maybe even at some points varying, um, opinions. So, Anyhow, stay tuned. We love you and thank you for listening. And we hope that we have jolted, have made you uncomfortable in your faith that you will dig deeper in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.